What's up, everybody? I'm excited to finally get this going. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. PGT, people are saying that they can't hear you. Can you guys hear me? Check, check, one, two. Check, check. Check, oh. one, two. How do I sound, everybody? Can you guys hear me? Check, check. Testing, testing. One, two, three. <laughs> the banana is muted. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was... <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for letting me know. I was... What did you do? What did you have muted? The, the input? Yeah, yeah, the input was muted. So, yeah. Okay, they're, they're... so what... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, we have some technical difficulties. This is kind of what the, the first episode is meant to kind of go over. This episode is more or less just a, a fun time. Don't take anything too serious here. We're, we're just testing things out, making sure everything works well, and just seeing, gauging the community and seeing how you guys like the idea of the Michael Game Show. Yeah, so that's what PGT was trying to explain, was this is just a nice little pilot episode um, so that we can get everything kind of worked out here, so technical difficulties are going to happen. And it's, again, nothing too serious. It's just PGT and I. I'm going to be the first contestant, obviously. PGT is the host. And what's going to happen is we're going to run through the game show tonight to give you an idea of how it's actually going to be played and what the point of it is, is to get this pilot episode going. And maybe as it takes off, hopefully it does, we will be able to take actual contestants on from the fan base here. Um, there is an announcement live stream I did first on this channel that was a couple weeks ago now. Kind of give you a little idea of what was coming up here. So this now that we're here now, it's just a little more of a preview before we get started. So yeah, thank you so much for <clears throat> doing a little announcement here last week. Yeah, just uh, unforeseen events here. I uh, had to delay that. But uh, everything is now all good, and we're all set here for the Michael Game Show. Uh, this game show is just a, a way for us to give back to the community here, uh, something that we want to give back in terms of knowledge, give back in terms of getting community involvement in, with this, uh, just increase more fun in Mycology in general. And, you know, be able to give back in, in, in terms of prizes to the contestants and, and all that, and also help a good cause in terms of uh, donating to any research that, that goes towards development of the, um, the movement of mycology to what we're doing here. Yeah, I see somebody, what did I just see? Dirties in the chat said, give away some free spores. Well, you know what? That could be coming up soon after we get a couple shows in here. Yeah. Hunter's asking, am I a banana? Well, I, I, I'm bananas for mushroom. That's, that's all I can say. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to be a mushroom, but, you know, I couldn't. So bananas, like, the next best thing you can kind of, like, be. Caden <laughs> want... Naylor asked, is this a game show for active species only? Well, it's the Myco game show, so it's, like, anything to deal, to, to do with Myco stuff. Um, no, oh, and then what I brought this up on that announcement I did. Nate H said, enable a super chat donation thing for us. We This channel isn't monetized yet. That's the point of doing these pilot episodes. We need to, you need to have a certain amount of subscribers and views in order to monetize the channel at all. So this is just kind of like the very beginning to see how things go. Starting the pilot episodes and getting the community together. Yes, so hopefully this channel starts taking off and we'll be able to get it uh, growing. The community seems very excited. I'm, I'm very surprised a lot, a lot of people have showed up tonight just for this episode. So I'm very thankful for you guys being here, supporting. Hit the like button. There you go. Nate, Nate said. 
So, yeah. Yeah, hit the like, subscribe, share with everybody. Let's get the subscribers up, get the views up. And a couple last second plugs is, yeah, the Michael Valley collab with PGT. And then my Patreon is very close to launching. Just sign up for the wait list. And you can still visit my website, 90secondmycology.com, for all of your 90 information. And I don't know, is that it? I think we can just jump right into it now. For anybody who just joined, this is just a test show. We're just having fun with it. Yes. Um, so yeah, so 90BU being my first contestant here, uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of go over with, with the contestants as they come on is what, what brings you to mycology? Like what got you started in mycology? I'm always curious about, you know, where, where people kind of got that itch to go down that rabbit hole. Like what, what brought you to want to be a mycologist? Yeah. So it started for me because I've always been into like psychedelics and stuff. Like most people, I started smoking weed and I was like, oh, oh yeah, peace and love. And then you go to LSD and it's like, this is pretty cool, but it's not easy for somebody to just like lay acid in their kitchen. So then it got me into looking into psychedelic mushrooms and stuff. And then, of course, that's where you start with the active mushrooms. Like most people, they get into growing cubes and then all of a sudden they're like, wow, but then there's oysters, lion's mane. All these other bioluminescent mushrooms. So it really just started with the psychedelics, and then that's where I am now. So you got into it because you wanted, like, a poor man's acid? Basically, more, a more grounded experience. I haven't had real acid in I don't know how many years, so all I know are mushrooms right now. I can't smoke weed either, because as most people know, I'm a truck driver during the day. So we get federally randomly tested and, uh, you know, can't do it. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's all part of the safety on the job. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I'd imagine I, yeah, there, there are people out there that just get into researching psychedelics and wanting to get into it. Well, that's pretty awesome. So after, I guess, what made you decide to just take that plunge and, and start growing? Was it was it the, the, the Uncle Ben's? No, it first started, um, I believe, it was around 2015 when I first found the, uh, the, the, the low-quality Roger Rabbit videos on YouTube. It was 2015 or 16, because it was, it was kind of like around the time of Halo 5. I don't know why I use Halo as like a, the video game as like a point of reference. And it was the BRF just boiling, steaming it in a pot with the spores. And so I went from there looking up pressure cooker stuff, and that's what intimidates a lot of people. But, yeah, I was able to do the BRF, and it was fruiting with the Ziploc bag on top of the BRF cake. And that worked. There was, like, a couple mushrooms, and, like, that's your first time. But then I only recently got back into it when I started my channel. And... and that was like, what, 2020 now because of Uncle Ben, of course. And I just decided to take off with it. And it's really changed a lot of things for a lot of people because you go from people don't even know about mycology vendors when they first get into it. They don't know you can actually buy, you know, three pounds of sterile grain from somebody. But when they're first getting into this, they go, well, I can spend a dollar twenty five on Savvy Fair Rice at Dollar Tree now. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work out for me, then all I spent was a dollar twenty five plus whatever on other supplies. So that's really it took off in 2015, took a little bit of a break because, I you know, I had a lot going on. And then I came back here around 2020, the pandemic hit. And that's when the channel really took off. And I've just been trying to keep it going ever since. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have also joined the fun. A lot of people make 90 second rice content. And I always encourage that just to see. You know, other people might have another take on how to work with 90 Second Rice. But um, there's just no vibe like 90 Second Mycology. You just can't replicate it. I know. You, you went and did your own thing with that. You, you went, like, full deep mode with the, the Uncle Ben's. Which yeah. Which is awesome. Like, I mean, I... I not I mean, I had the idea to try to make an Uncle Ben's video, too. But I'm like, I, I can't do it, man. Like, 90 is just too good at doing what he does already so i'm gonna leave it up for 90 and if anyone asks i'll just tell people go check out 90's channel because he is the the uncle ben's lord pretty much there yeah mycelium seb says i hear a lot of hate for uncle ben's yeah it's funny and yeah i have a video called um perfect well, what is it 
best tips for perfect success every time show this video to the haters nobody has an answer as to why everybody hates it nobody knows why all they go, all they say is it sucks it contams get a pressure cooker it's not going to contaminate if you have good syringes like anything else uh, you know, not uh, always culture or sports. I, I do notice some, some, I mean, I, I went through a phase where I was knocking up like two dozen Uncle Ben bags. And then I started learning, you know, the hard way once they start contaminating and then I ended up losing a lot of Uncle Ben's. And that's kind of why, what drove me to get a pressure cooker. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, it could, it could be the syringe. It, I mean, I was still kind of starting off at the time and... Or it could be the bags just being too wet, which I hear nowadays that they're making the new Uncle Ben bags more wetter to try and prevent people from doing this stuff. I don't know. So I haven't had issues. I still stick what we, we say like 0.5 to 0.75 cc's of liquid. And as long as you have good gas exchange, I've switched to just two hole punches on the top corners uh, for gas exchange. And I just so the savvy fair I've been posting with Golden Teacher Spores inoculated. Um, that's from Inoculate the World, and no issues. Colonize just fine, nothing rotted, and I even did it on a regular Ben's original bag, no problem. I think a lot of people, it gets, the rice will get stuck in the syringe, and the, they, they inject too hard, and they end up squirting like 5 cc's. So you just have to be gentle, be careful, but be firm at the same time, you know? Yep. <clears throat> But yeah, Uncle Ben's. There's, I've got a lot of success with Uncle Ben's. This, the brown rice is just a perfect like grain for the the mycelium to consume. Yeah, if nobody has seen your grain experiment video that you just did, um, spoiler alert: the best grain, brown rice. Yeah, I, I do believe because the brown rice. Um, one is very nutritious, and then the, my, I believe that my slim can consume the entire brown rice grain. And that, that's kind of what separates it apart from a lot of the other grains, where they kind of just colonize the outside, and they kind of slowly start making their way in. But I hear with brown rice, they can break down the entire brown rice completely and colonize it. <laughs> Monica said, Golden Teacher will grow on a car tire. <laughs> if it, you know... Who knows if all the strains going around nowadays, all the varieties are even actual varieties. You can grow whatever and call it whatever you want. Who knows what it really is? Yeah, people be renaming a lot of varieties out there, and it's, it's kind of getting muddied, how I think of it. Yeah. Anyhow. Um, so real, real quick, Justin Norse said, I was searching your channel today to see if you had an opinion on Earth Science Fast Acting Gypsum. Run it to the coffee grinder? I don't know. I always buy powder gypsum, so can't help you there. Yeah. Smoke and Joe, have you guys tried the isolated spore syringe from ITW? Yes, we have. It's it's an isolated um, to liquid culture. He's not scared to say that, so I can say it. But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll get that's started. That's what's going on. With the, yeah, that's what's um, going on. The game show. So thank you for the great background here. Um, yeah, the questions you guys have, we're going to do a Q&A towards the end of the show here. So if anyone's got like questions in mycology or about the game show in general, uh, we'll definitely be sticking around doing a Q&A after the show. Uh, but we don't want to hold things up too much any longer. And uh, we'll kind of get started with the show here, just to uh, let you guys get a taste of what we have come up with here. And, uh, yeah, oh, people were asking about the, the shirts. Uh, Michael Valley and I are doing a collaboration art shirt here that's coming out here in the next uh, month or two. So just be on the lookout. It's something we're just kind of teasing out there. I, I like to try and collaborate with people in the community. So these, there's little projects that I have here and there coming. So just, just kind of give you guys an, an idea of what's going on behind the works. All right, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hop over. We'll get started here. With the Michael I'm Show. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, so we're at the Michael Game Show. So, you ready? I'm ready. I'm are you, ready. Are you really ready? I cannot wait to win 16 laminar flow hoods tonight. This is going to be amazing. Oh, that, that, oh, I'm sorry. We, we don't have the flow hoods in here yet. But we do have 16 great different 
prizes dedicated for you, 90. So, oh my god, what is this going to be? Let's see. Well, we'll, we'll find out here. We're, we're going to get started <laughs> here. I'm excited. <clears throat> so we'll get, before we get started, I uh, just want to let you guys know the Michael Game Show is for entertainment purposes only. Although the questions and answers have been researched and reconfirmed by production team before the show, uh, audiences shouldn't rely on the information presented in the show. Please use your own judgment and do your own research. Michael Game Show is not responsible to for your actions in any of this. So it's, just, it's not a serious game show, just to put it that way. Um, we got your favorite phrase here 90s catchphrase common oh yes common prevail. sense will almost always prevail always practice it because although we try to stay truthful here and we try to get accurate facts something might come up that's not you know someone's gonna be a know-it-all actually it's this and that and not that and this you know we, we get it it's just it's just fun okay yeah yeah, and also the stream features materials that might be copyrighted, but we're, we're using this under fair use guidelines. Obviously, we're, we're coming up with a game show, presenting it in a way. So any any rights that, that we might be using on pictures or anything like that, they're all reserved to their own copyright owners. Uh, so yeah, just don't sue me, bro. <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to, to steal your stuff for, for that. Just, I give credit for, you know, where, where it's at if I end up using any of that. So we'll get started here. So, for the prizes, 90, you have choices. Oh, we! Oui. <laughs> Between Ooh. 16 different varieties. Oh. No, actually, it's only 12. It's, it's not 16. It's only 12. <laughs> but yeah, 12 different varieties of Ben's original rices for you to pick. So, how the Michael Game Show works, you're going to pick uh, based off of which prize that you would like. We start off with the tier easy. We've got tier OK. It's kind of like you're in the middle, in the between kind of thing. And we got to your heart. That that's that's your your top of the line questions that uh, you know you really got to know your mycology shit if you want to answer those questions. So. Oh yeah. man, this is amazing. I haven't seen these varieties in a long time because I just keep buying brown rice. I know there's so much different flavors out there, man. <laughs> So yeah, t take your pick of uh, on the uh, tier easy. Which one do you like to start off with? You got basmati, well, jasmine, long green white, or whole green brown? <laughs> oh man, do I have to pick easy, or can I start with a heart? You gotta pick easy. You gotta work your way up, man. Oh okay. It's easy, so um, you should be able to get it. There's no problem, right? Um. Okay. Let me choose. Let's go with the long green white. All right, we're going with the long green white. Question for you. What logo does this represent? A, Sexy Michael Man. B, Michael Da Vinci. C, Inoculate the World. Or D, Michael Pyramid. Um, oh, this is hard as hell. God. <clears throat> looks like everyone in the chat is saying <laughs> it's the... Sexy Michael man? No, 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 that's not right, guys. I'm gonna go with. Oh god. What could this be? Oh man, there's a few. Everyone's saying Sexy Michael man. Hey. But I'm gonna have to go with Inoculate the World. Is that your final answer? Uh. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go with Inoculate the World. All right, we'll go with Inoculate the World. There it is. It is correct. It is yes! ITW. Here's your chance. What's yes. the affiliate code for ITW? Yeah, that's right. So actually, both of us, you and I, have affiliate accounts with Inoculate the World. So if you go to 90secondmycology.com slash ITW, uh, you can support 90 Second Mycology at no extra cost to you. And get 10% off with code 90SM. And PGT, don't you have an affiliate with them as well? Yes, I do. Uh, it's just called PGT. So if you use that, you get 10% off uh, with ITW. And he's, he's been around for a while. You know, good dude. Has very good clean spore syringes. And I I recommend him. He's got a good crew yeah. working underneath Isolated him. syringes. Get the isolated syringes. Yeah. So yeah, great job. You win the first question. So you have the long green white rice. All right. Uh, this, we, we that was crazy. On. That was... I know, right? Yeah, that that, that's so difficult, God. that question. I don't know. Uh, which one would you like to go with next? All right, let's go with the classic whole grain brown at the end. 
All right, we're gonna go with the whole green brown rice, the OG. Here we go. Question, what is the term for the <laughs> network of fine thread-like structures that make up the body of a fungus? A, is it oh, spore? God. B, is it microthread? C, is it mycelium? Or D, mode? Oh, oh man. Um, how long do I have to answer? Uh, you got 60 seconds. Gosh. Oh, all right, I, it's it can't be mycelium. Um, everyone's telling me it's mold. That can't be right either. Um, what is the term for the network of fine thread-like structures that make up the body of a fungus? I'm gonna go with C, mycelium. C, mycelium. That is correct. Oh, hey, thank God. Me. Oh, look at that. People are asking, Sensei, any updates on the Pansion project? So, yeah, the, the last plate that you saw on there is a, a plate of some Panalia cyanocins. I am currently in the process of experimenting with Pansions. Um, updates for the Pansion project. I have to let you guys know I'm a bit behind just because of some setbacks with the Pansions. They are much more difficult to deal with than Cubensis. Uh, majority of the issue with the setbacks is either your grains are not getting fully colonized, they're getting contaminated, and pans I find overall just e are much easier to prone to contamination, and that set me back so much in trying to, to work with them. But I'm very close. I, I have been able to get them to fruit in a tub and in a tent. Um, and just to give you guys an update, you can grow pans on CVG. If you got the right um, genetics, they will just grow on CVG. So just just a little bit more to go. I've to, got um, pretty much everything except for the fruiting part of the pans going. So um, pretty soon here, I have some more trying to do another attempt at fruiting them. And, you know, hopefully I get some success and teach you guys. And even if not, I don't get full success with it. I'm going to teach you guys anyway with what I've gone through so that you can guys can kind of kind of ignore the the mistakes that I've made along the way, you know, trying to, to grow pans. Yes, pans, pans, they do like poo, but that doesn't mean that poo is, you know, the only thing they grow on. They, they have grown on CBG, and that's one of the things I've tested. So yeah, that, that's... Asked, will pans will pans grow with ninety bags? Yes, you can grow anything with ninety bags because it's just a grain spawn step. And if you're not if you don't know what we're talking about, I have a flow chart. If you go to ninety second mycology.com slash flowcharts to get an idea of what we're doing, that will help you along the way of figuring out exactly like how many things you can really do with ninety second rice. But a lot of it is reserved for ninety Patreon, which is coming soon. Yes. All right, so we got Ooh, we. jasmine rice and basmati rice. Ooh, we. Both very good choices when you're a little bit hungry. Hmm. Let's do the basmati. All right, we're going into basmati rice here. There's Uncle oh. Ben's question for you. Before mushroom oh, inoculation God. to the Uncle Ben's rice bag, how long should we microwave our bags? A, six oh. seconds. B, 90 seconds, C, 120 seconds, or D, you idiot, no microwave is needed. Oh my god, alright, this is pretty hard because I've always done it for 120 seconds. But I thought, I thought it was 90. <laughs> I know, I always overcook the rice. Um, oh my god, everyone's telling me it's D. Do we have to cook the rice? They literally... No, we don't. It's D. We do not have to cook the rice. I don't want to confuse anybody. That's correct. You don't have to cook the rice. The rice is already cooked. So right. many people ask, comment, did you cook the rice? I missed that step. It's our, it, the, the rice is sterile, ready to eat. It's just to warm it up. If you, you don't want to eat cold rice. Yeah. My ceiling would love cold rice, though. Hmm. Sometimes I do after 120 seconds. <laughs> All right. All right. We got Jasmine Rice here is your next question. I guess that's what I got left. Yeah, let's go with Jasmine. What's going on? Which of the following is unfriendly mushroom NPC <laughs> in the Mario gameplay? <laughs> A, is it Toad? B, is it Goomba? C, Toadette? 
Or D. There's no mean mushroom NPC in Mario. Oh god. Anybody see the new Mario movie yet? I haven't yet. No, I hear I hear a lot of good things about it. I've I've seen the the Bowser music video for that. I love that. Yeah. Jack Black. Jack Black. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, this is. Come on, man. You you know Mario. There, there's some, there's some mean oh. mushrooms in Mario. I'm gonna have to go with the Goombas number B. I mean letter B. All right, we're going B Goomba. That is correct. Ooh, the Goombas. Jumping on them. All right, you've won tier easy. That means you get to advance Ooh. to tier okay. <laughs> and in tier okay, okay we have okay. butter and garlic rice. We got long grain and wild rice, cheddar broccoli rice, or garden vegetable. Oh, oh, oh we. Um. Are they pairing that long grain and wild with some steak? Is that some beef? That looks yeah, like. Let's go with. Let's that looks go with like the long steak. green and wild. <laughs> oh. All right. What is the name of the compound found in the hallucinogenic mushroom Amanita muscaria that has been used traditionally for its psychoactive properties? A. Muscimo. B. Psilocybin. C. Ergotamine. Or D. The trippy mushroom molecule. <laughs> Um, oh, real quick, P Funk wanted to know do I get something for clearing the first tier? Um, I think we talked about that behind the scenes. Yes. Um, so, the rules of the games after you finish a tier, you win the prizes for that tier. So, what you can do is take the prizes for the tier, or you could risk it all to try and move into the next tier and get access to better prizes. Yeah, but for the sample show, obviously, we're going to run through it all and just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, if you clear the easy tier, you'll get real simple, you know, prize. And then you can forfeit that and continue on to try to get a bigger, better prize. All right, so. Oh, Amanita Muscaria. Fly Agaric, as they say sometimes, I think, right? Do you have to cook these like the rice? I believe so. Oh, can you can't you smoke this one too? I believe so. <laughs> oh god, then I have to go with muscamol. That's how I narrowed it down because you can't eat or smoke. I mean, you can't smoke si silly cybin, obviously. I mean, you probably can. It's just probably not going to well, taste good. <laughs> am I the only one that um you, who the, like the friend group, quote unquote, said if you smoke mushrooms, you go blind. Anyone else hear that? I don't think oh, I've ever heard that I, one. Am I the only one? Okay. No, I, I don't know. But you probably shouldn't smoke mushrooms. I mean, that's a lot of like carbon and shit. They're gonna just burn and incinerate and a lot of tar, smoke skin into. Your... I I I would not do it. Recommend. Okay, so Ismael Rodarte says, in the future, do you guys plan on getting viewers as contenders in the game show? Yeah. Yes. yes that's, yep, that's, that's it. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. All right, just a little tidbit about uh, Amanita Muscaria. Um, in order to, like, use them, you have to boil them. Uh, so the muscamo is actually um, very poisonous to you uh, if you do not boil um, the Amanita out and I mean, the process oh kind of gets broken down when you dehydrate it as well. You heat it up to, to break down the molecule, so that way it's easier to uh, ingest. You literally have to cook the mushroom. Yeah, you got to cook them. Wow. So, great job and... on getting the long grain and wild rice question correct. Now we're yeah, back here on to, to the next tier OK here with question... Or which okay. bag of ready rice would you like to select? Oh god, this is... Oh man. Alright, let's do the butter and garlic. Butter and garlic. Alright, before we move on to that real quick, I think Nomad here uh, wants to bring up a point what happens when animals eat Amanita muscarias. Uh, yeah, that, that came up with uh, reindeers. Reindeers have been known to consume Amanita muscarias, and 
yeah, they apparently they trip off of them. And um, I've heard stories of the natives actually consuming the, the urine from the um, reindeers in order to trip off of them because apparently the psychoactive elements from Amanitas get passed through through their urines and you can oh, do yeah. that. <laughs> I don't know who, who was the first person that figured that out but yeah that that's a thing. Anyhow just a little interesting tidbit about Almanitas and, and reindeer. It's kind of, kind of where the uh, the PGC logo kind of originated from. I didn't know that because I was never really into Fly Agarics. I just think they look know... really cool. They, they're nothing else. No other mushroom looks like them. They're just right, so yeah. distinct. That's like the typical mushroom you think of, red and white. I know. That's what this idea of Santa Claus kind of, kind of comes into. Maybe you think Santa Claus might be, you know, drinking some reindeer piss and goes flying around at night and going down people's chimneys and whatnot. Anyhow, next question. Uh, this is an interesting one here. What is the name of the mushroom that glows in the dark? A. Is it Ooh. chandelure? B. Jack-o'-lantern mushroom? C. Honey mushroom? Or D. Glow fungi? So there's there's a bunch that glow in the dark. And I see um, bonsai fungi in the chat here just recently grew some. Um, I'm gonna have to go with. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's saying A. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with B, jack o' lantern mushroom, because jack o' lanterns are lit. Like, literally lit. Lit with a candle. Why, why don't they just call them light mushrooms then? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> But yes, B, jack o' lantern mushroom is correct. Oh! -ho! There's a fun fact here. Did you know uh -oh. there are more than 70 fungal species that can glow in the dark, such as bitter oyster, green pepe, eternal light mushroom, and our answer, jack o' lantern mushroom. So, bioluminescent mushrooms that glow in the dark. This is the article that it came from here. Uh, Bonsai fungi on Instagram has grown some glow in the dark mushrooms. So, if you want to go check it out, this page is Bonsai fungi on Instagram. And yeah, he's, he's got some cool shots of his mushrooms glowing in the dark. It's, it's really cool. I don't know, Nighty, do how do you feel about soon. these glow in the dark mushrooms? I want to grow some of them soon because I want to see if they can fruit right off the rice, like oyster mushrooms and stuff. Because I read that like not every mushroom will fruit off of grain spawn alone, but brown rice is one of those like substrates, quote unquote, that'll fruit a lot different species of mushrooms directly off of it. So, imagine yeah. fruiting from the bag and it just glows in the dark. I think that'll be a fun experiment to try. You should definitely do that, 90. I've seen people grow yeah, yep. lion's mane and pink oysters out of those mush those right. Uncle Ben's bags. They look really dope. Where would you get the spores for them, Yogi Bear asked. Um, different vendors. I have a link page on my website, 90secondmycology.com slash links. But I'm not sure which vendors carry them right now. It's kind of like a novelty niche thing. Obviously, people want, you know, Golden Teacher and all that other stuff. I wonder if you can cross them. Um, Wolfthorn PUBG. Can Cube spawn off the bag? Yeah, I do have a Fruiting from the Bag video. It's like two hours long. It's a documentary. Oh, uh, yeah. Some honey mushrooms are bioluminescent, too. So, yeah, it was, you know, that answer was kind of open for debate. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. But jack o' lantern mushrooms is pretty more common for, for their glowing properties. But yeah, good job getting that one. Um, yeah, we've got cheddar broccoli rice, we got Ooh. garden vegetable rice. Ooh. I don't know. What, what, what should I pick, guys? Let's go into the chat. What should I pick next? Cheddar broccoli or garden vegetable? Both equally ready in 90 seconds. Oh man, okay. everyone wants the cheddar. I see. All right, let's do cheddar broccoli. Cheddar's the clear winner. All right, what is the name of the process by which fungi breaks down organic matter and recycle nutrients in the environment? A. What? 
That should be A, damn it. <laughs> a, micro recycling. B, recomposition. D, decomposition. Or D, budding. Well, this is a good one. I'm gonna go with. You would think that they're just micro recycling. Everyone's saying C. <laughs> well, which C? <laughs> <laughs> which. I'm going to go with, ooh, I don't know. Let's go with decomposition. Oh, let's see, decomposition. That is correct. Oh my god! Got it. Yeah, I need to make got a him. note here to fix that for next time. A little typo got there. Him. But yeah, you got the cheddar right. C for cheddar. Ooh wee, C for cheddar. Oh, that means we got garden vegetable. Let's see. Let's. Oh God, I'm nervous. All right, we got we got the garden vegetable. Oh God. What percentage of human is mushroom? A. Seventy percent. B. Ninety percent. We're actually mushroom men. C. Twenty percent. Or D. Fifty percent. Oh my God. Oh, well, since ninety is my middle name. Um. Ooh wee. Let's see, what's everyone saying? <laughs> we got some Nate, C's, 100%. B's, A. Kyle J said D. We got A. C. Uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like half a mushroom. I'm gonna <laughs> go with D. 50%. D. That's correct. Here's a fun fact. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you know, in one of the articles on wwbird.org, Stamus explains that humans share nearly 50% of their DNA with fungi, and we can track oh many God. of the same viruses as fungi. If we can identify the natural immunities that fungi have developed, Stamus says we can extract them to help humans. I knew it. That's why I feel like half a mushroom, 50%. <laughs> so, yeah, mushrooms so are... So I beat... The okay tier. Yes, oh, you, you 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 did. You you beat the tier okay. You you got eight questions right. We've got four more to go. Oh man! And if I was a regular contestant, I'd be able to either take the prize here or forfeit and continue to tier hard. That's all right. But you got the I'm fanciest. Go with... Yeah, we got the fanciest prize here in the tier hard. You got you got the. Ooh. And that Korean barbecue is kind of calling my name right now. I, don't... I think I have to chill. I'm going to go with Korean barbecue next. All right. We're going with the Korean barbecue here. Oh, Korean barbecue. All right. How many sex or gender does the split gill mushroom, a.k.a. Schizophilum commune, have? A, one. B, two. C, around 2,000, or D, more than 20,000. Oh, I'm not familiar with this species. Let's... Let's see, what's the chat saying? We got A, C, D, D maybe, C, D. Let's use the 50-50 button to break it down. All right, we got the 50-50 lifeline. So just so you guys are aware, we got lifelines in here. We've got chat, ask, well, this, this is ask the chat. No, chat is, is the chat. That's where you get the answer from the chat. Um, ask would be to ask uh, chat GPT. It's kind of a cheating answer, but, and then 50-50. So we drop 50-50 here. We've got either one or more than 20,000. Since mushrooms are weird like that, I'm going to have to go with more than 20,000 because mushrooms are just weird. I can agree with you there. Go for D. That is correct. It's more than 20,000. Oh. So, fun fact. Did you know, as a Michael Game Show producer, you read through a few articles. You still can't understand about the sexes of mushroom, but here's what we found. In the article, the fungus has more than 17,000 sexes by James M. Gaines from The Scientist. When in organism, 
why why would any organism need so much sexual variation remains an open question, but the study author at the University of Oslo, geneticist David Perez, suspects that it has to do with the mushrooms, their lifestyle. Having to be different at two different gene regions makes it less likely for spores to release for the same mushroom to successfully combine, thus lowering the odds for inbreeding. That's really that's really interesting. Like it 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 prevents itself from inbreeding by producing so many different compatible spores. That's crazy. I just don't know why that they have so many different sexes. It's kind of how does it even know? It just does it. Like I, that's why I knew that we're fifty percent mushroom. We just feel like we sometimes we feel like we have twenty thousand different genders on us, right? I mean, not really. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with with the different genders. But gosh, seventeen thousand. I mean, like you might as well just become a whole different species at that point. We have so many different sexes for it. It's very interesting, though. But yeah, I guess it's still falling under the same species of fungi. But yeah, fungi guys are just so strange and weird that we just don't understand why they do what they do, but people are still researching the heck out of them, and there's still so much more to learn and, and discover about mushrooms. Vincent says, sounds like that scientist just made that up. You never know. That's like we said, this is all for fun, who knows if our facts are actually factual. <laughs> Tim from Tip of the Cap says most of, the, most of them are compatible with each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mycelium Seb, did he count them? <laughs> uh, apparently, he counted 17,000. Uh, that, that, I don't know how, you, you need a computer to count all that. I'm not sitting there counting 17,000 different mushrooms. That, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, just the tips, Yogi. That's right. Yeah, just hope you guys learned something out of that, because I did not know about this until I started researching into this. So, crazy, crazy stuff out there in my colony. Oh, good job getting the Korean barbecue question right. Hmm. Got That's crazy. We got Spanish style. We got the creamy four cheese Ooh, ready rice. More cheese. And we've got the fried rice ready rice. Mm. I, it seemed like the chat loved the cheese. Should I go with the cheese? Um, fried rice seems kind of generic right now. Yeah, let's go with the creamy four cheese. Creamy four cheese it is. What is the name of the process by which fungi reproduce sexually? Is it A, Ooh. conjugation? B, budding, C, fission, or D, mating. Ooh. This is a good one. A lot of people would think that you're just mating. Let's see. Let's go with, let's, let's do the 50-50 again. Let's see. Everyone's saying C or D. Let's see if they're close. C or D. Well, we did use the 50-50. Oh, can we use it once? You have once one lifeline of each use. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Then let's let's choose C. Let's choose fission. I see a lot of C's in the chat. I'll go with fission. Fission. That is incorrect. The correct oh, answer we got it wrong. Is A conjugation. Ah, oh, they're conjugating. That makes sense. They're just having a meeting. They're just meeting, okay. So I got one wrong. What does that mean for me in the hard tier? Well, but that means that means you you lose. <laughs> oh, all right. But goodbye, since this everybody. Is the... it was fun. <laughs> but <laughs> come back here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just uh, the first episode. We're going to let it slide here, and uh, we're going to continue on with the game because, you know, we're here to have some fun. And, uh, yeah, this, this is all in the name of fun for my college. You, so we'll, we'll, we'll get you back with another lifeline here. So we got Spanish-style rice and fried rice. Oh, mm, both equally pretty good when you cook them for 90 seconds. 
got two of the most the world's most influential mm. race styles here going. Mm. I'm going to have to go with Let's do Spanish. Espanol style. This. Spanish style. <laughs> Style de Espanol. All right, question here. What is the name of the new magic mushroom species recently named after <laughs> the legendary mycologist Paul Stamets? Ooh. Is it A. Psilocy Polito? B. Penelius Panstamets? <laughs> C. Magic Stamet? Or D. None of the oh, above? Oh, man. Man, this is crazy. I love the Penelius Panstamet. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously going to be right, right? No, there's so many myco myco files here. We all know that none of the above. We know what he found, and it was not psilocybe polito. <laughs> that that would it be was a, none uh, of the above. <laughs> yes, there was D none of the above. So fun fact: Did you know the question was created by a PGT and the answer were by 19 second mycology? But we took out the true answer to trick them. Did it work? I don't know. What no. do you think? No. I don't think so. But congratulations to Paul Stamets for finding and naming that new species. Psilocybe Stametsi. Stametsi? Stametsi? Um, Stametsi. Sure yeah, Stametsi. Stametsi? Stametsi. Yeah. So, so it's, it's nice to see. So, <laughs> it's one of them. I know. It's, uh, I think it's Pan Stamets. That should, be, that should really be one of it. Pan Stamets. I, I do like those names better. So I only have fried rice left. Yes, you got the fried rice. We're okay. down to the last question of the tier hard here. I'm going to have to go with the fried rice, obviously. Let's see. All right, we're going with the fried rice. Last question. Who is the father of mycology? Is it A, Paul Stamets? B, Henrich Anton de Berry, or it's because Heinrich, or C, Pierre Antonio McKelly, or D, Uncle Ben. This this is too easy. It's obviously Uncle Ben, but that's because it's too easy. That's a trick question because Uncle Ben did not invent the mushroom. Obviously, this guy in the picture. This is this is him. Doesn't look like Uncle Ben, so that's how I know. No. Doesn't look like Paul Stamets either. Doesn't look like his name would be Pierre. He could and be a chat's, Pierre. Chat's, chat's not allowed to Google it and find out. I, He looks like a Heinrich. I'm going to go with B. B, Heinrich. Is that your final answer? Hmm. The last question on the line. This is it. I'm about to say B, final answer. All right, B, final answer. Heinrich Anton de Berry. That is correct. Oh, let's go. That is correct. See, I knew it. Didn't look like Pierre. I know. This question threw me off, too. I mean,. Heinrich Anton de Berry is the father of mycology, though. If you look him up, you, you'll, you'll know. Very interesting. So he invented the mushroom? That's crazy. He kind of was the one that kind of started growing mushrooms and, and kind of doving into to mycology and, and all that. This is like way back, probably like 50 years plus ago. But yeah, that that's, uh, that's the... Last question wow. of the tier hard. So you almost got it all. You got you got one wrong, but we'll let that slide. So you you we'll we'll let this go for the first episode of the Michael Game Show. I think that was pretty fun. I like that. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I mean, the, these are interchangeable. We're going to be changing things up as we go along with some more difficult questions. Some more cool prizes on here. Obviously, this is the first show. We are just kind of putting fake prizes up on the screen for you guys here. Um, in the future, we would like to get sponsors for our show. 
so that we can have sponsored prizes up on here for people to win as well as you know get some exposure out there for anyone interested in you know trying to sponsor the Michael game show and we we'll hope to have a lot better prizes on here for contestants that can win in the future yeah so everybody who's still around what do you say we take intermission and then when we come back we can do our Q&A so if anybody still wants to stick around we'll just hang out for a little bit longer and see what you guys think about this and how far we can really take it yeah so we'll take a quick break here for an intermission you know you can go take the bathroom get a drink of water whatever you like to do play on your phone <laughs> uh, but yeah we'll take a break here we'll be right back and we'll uh, sit down with you guys do some Q&A's just to kind of finish off and get you guys uh, inputs here on how the show went all right thank you guys so much and we'll be right back here shortly
All right, welcome back. We are back from intermission, and uh, we have 90 and me here. We're going to chill here with you guys for a little bit, answer some questions, do some Q&As for you guys. And, uh, yeah, glad, glad you guys had enjoyed the game show. If this is something you guys are interested, we're, we're more than happy to continue with the series, come up with more questions, come up with different types of game shows, too. That That's one of the things that we have in mind, is to switch up the type of game that we're doing. So it's not always going to be, like, questionnaire trivia type thing, but there's going to be different variations of the game show coming out. Yeah, it's not going to be the same thing over and over. Like, you know, we're going to have different ideas, different... Um participation things going on um <laughs> nomad has that question again <laughs> what's the question is that your real voice the people need to know <laughs> uh it, it it's it's ran through a voice changer oh he revealed it yeah um, Dibble Mycology, how are you guys pick contestants? That's one of the things we're still kind of working on. You know, we wanted to get this pilot episode out to get your guys' feedback first. <clears throat> but yeah, we're working on all that. Same thing with Tip of the Cap set about ads and uh, sponsors. You know, we're still details are, are being ironed out on that. Yes, I, I mean, the sponsors would get um, their prize is listed up on the, the prize page, so every single time we go back to that prize page, you'll see who our sponsors are and what is available in terms of sponsored prizes on there. And yeah, I, I think during the, the, the little breaks, uh, we, we can also, you know, increase some exposure for the sponsors, because people probably want to know, hey, where do I get a hold of that if I don't win it? <laughs> Yeah, Edward. Got a, lot, a lot of questions here coming in from you guys. Yeah, I'm picking some here. Oh, fly on the wall. How do I sign up? If you can't get a sponsor, I'd I'd play for swabs and prints or basic lab equipment. Yeah, we're also working on that. And obviously, when it when we have it figured out, we'll announce it. So make sure to follow the Myco Game Show on Instagram, um, here on YouTube as well. Where else? That's it right now, right? Yeah. YouTube, Instagram. YouTube and Instagram. To, to, yeah. Yep. Psychedelic Spores said on CVG with proper hydration. If you have bluing on the caps, is it just because of too much FAE or did it use up the water in the substrate? Jack Frost. Um, it just, it really did. No. It's hard to tell that without photos because there's a, <clears throat> yeah. Bluing happens because of the psilocybin content uh, oxidizing. So uh, I've noticed a lot of bluing would happen if water droplets fall on the mushrooms as they're growing. That causes bruising on them to go blue. Uh, but uh, overall, they would, some some species or varieties we just turn blue uh, once they fully mature and they, they start getting um, from maturity to the point where they're starting to rot is kind of when they would really go dark blue. Uh, what's the next question here? Uh, Billy Bill asks, how long has your wife been involved in art? I love the graphics so much. Uh, more stickers in the PGT shop, please. Uh, my wife's been involved with art. Uh, pretty much she draw throughout um, high school. That's kind of her thing. She, she likes reading comic books and she draws from them, but she never really utilized her art throughout her working career. It's, it's only when the PGT channel started is when she got back into drawing again. So ever since then, she just continued with her artwork and just continues to get better and better as the, the more she, she draws and she really likes drawing. Are you going to have multiple contestants or just one per game show? Yeah, we're going to have we're thinking about at least three contestants at a time. That's from Mycelium Seb, wanted to know. Uh, yeah, what is this? Um, you guys are saying to Mango and uh, with the Kazoo, uh, Kahoot could be a cool way to go about the quiz. That's stuff I'm not familiar with. Kazoo, Kahoot, I don't know. Uh, George here says, what's your favorite optional ingredients for agar? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I like Peptone. Peptone's a good optional ingredient for agar. I think what else did I throw in the agar? Corn syrup I throw in the agar from time to time. I still just do the malt yeast extract as the basic recipe. Yep, yeah, malt, malt extract and right now, traditional yeast is good too. I've got some of the tester plates still from tip of the cap. Uh, Orion fans ask, what's a reliable source I can study spores at? Inoculate the world. That, that's a good source for that. Uh, Alex asks, how do I find a career and job in mycology? Ooh, that's a good question there. Um, well, you gotta... It kind of depends, but if you want to get into mycology, depends on whether you want to do mushroom farming, provide supplies. I mean, there, there. You can go to school for mycology if you want to get into commercial mushroom cultivation. Um, there are classes out there as well from commercial farmers that offer them out. So they offer training for you if you want to try and get into operating your very own mushroom farm. Yeah, one good thing is what what um, farmers markets. You don't need like a a food license or anything to sell stuff at farmers markets so you can get some grows and fruits uh gourmet mushrooms obviously and take them to a local farmers market to start your little stand oh um oh mushy wow. details asks from a u.s perspective where do you think the mushroom industry will be by the end of the decade Oh, it's really blowing up. It's taking off. I think it's going to continue trending upwards as more people now discover how wonderful mushrooms are, especially medicinal mushrooms, lion's mane, cordyceps, reishis, all have profound benefits for the human body. And as people discover more of that, people are going to be more into it. So I think it's going to continue growing. I mean, it has since um, the pandemic started. The, the interest for it has grown ever since and you know with the Michael game show coming out we just hope that interest in the mycology field continues to increase and uh, yeah it, it's it's a great thing people getting into it because I think it's a, a very underrated field of study to be in so that's why I'm rooting for it uh, let's see John K said or asked how hard was it for you guys to start filming? your processes and editing and producing YouTube content. Um, for me, it was pretty easy because that's another one of my hobbies was just like filming and editing stuff and playing around with stuff. So it's kind of like an extension of the mushroom stuff. The only hard part about producing mushroom content is you have to wait for the stuff to grow unless you're doing a simple video that doesn't involve growing anything. But other yeah. than that, you know, it, I, you guys see, I release really long videos, so like I'm sitting there listening to myself for hours on end, just cutting and edit, pasting, editing, doing stuff. But it's part of the fun because I know I'm producing something that people are gonna like. Yeah, kind of the same way for me. What got started into it is I had a different channel prior to the PGC channel. Um, I was just producing like little music video montages for the games that I've been playing. So I made like a, a shooting montage of me playing like a shooter game or something. And I do that, that's just my basic video editing. Uh, way back, I would say maybe like a decade ago was kind of when I started dabbling with video editing, and just the skills that I had from that, just making small videos. It wasn't too hard. It was just something that I did as a hobby, just to kind of learn and have fun with. Same thing with Photoshop. I, I play around in that when I was younger as a hobby, but it grew into a skill that I can utilize to work and create pieces of art. I, I like to create the videos as kind of an artwork and how I portray. Uh, I script out everything for the video prior to recording. So everything I already know what I'm going to be saying beforehand. So scripting and then filming the actual footage, going in, splicing it up, mixing it out, throwing the voiceovers on it and doing whatever editing yeah that I, I think on top that's of it to try and make it more you know pizzazz that's i think 
So like where where we differ is like I don't script anything. I'm standing there with the camera just talking to myself in the kitchen. So that's why you'll see like I have cuts in my video. Like I'm cutting out me taking a pause. Like what am I going to say next? Or like what am I trying to say? So I cut that out. Yeah, it just depends on people's style. Some some people can can do that. They can improvise off the top of their head, and just go with it with the camera, you know, recording. I I give props to you Bobby. for being able to do that. Bobby Co said, "How often do you guys dose?" I haven't dosed in a while, like a long time, because I've just been too busy. Yeah, I for me, I dose maybe. I don't know, once a quarter, once every five, six months or so. It kind of depends on, on when I feel I would need it. For me, I, I treat it uh, with a lot of respect, and I treat it more as a medicine, really, than something that's recreational. I mean, that doesn't mean that it has it doesn't have recreational value, but just for me personally, I take the value out of it as more medicinal. Whenever I need time to be introspective, that's kind of when I, I feel it calling for me. Yeah, I feel like the mushrooms will call you at the right time. Like they 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 bring you to them. Like you don't make the choice. Yeah, uh, one of the guys here have a question about the music, Mister Must Mustard Man. The music for the intermission music. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's called "Local Elevator" by Kevin McLeod or M A C. Is that the one? Is that the it's... one from the Creator Library or the website? Uh, I believe it's from the the website. Okay. Yeah, literally elevator music. Yeah. BD as always asked, what can what all can I do with my leftover agar slash gel and plates after I've taken samples? Um, you just have to get creative. You can just inoculate grain if you want to with it. Throw it out in a compost pile. Eat it if you really want to. It's edible. Have you eaten mycelium? No. But there are people that have eaten the rice cakes on Uncle Ben's subreddit. <laughs> I've and they also that. made made a tea. <clears throat> They'll like I've... soak the whole thing in tea and make a tea. Yeah, I think I think that's doable. But I think I saw that post of the guy just taking a big bite out of the, the colonized Ben cake. Yeah, Kinsey said, put it in a flower pot, yeah, throw it, you know, bury it. Uh, Psychedelic Spore has a little shout out here. Honestly, you both, Mycotrophic, Boomer Schumer, Fungi Mycology, and a few others has helped me loads. Just want to give you all a great thank you. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm kind of like trying to catch up with the questions here. I'm kind of a little bit further up behind. Yeah. I know. Um... We're, um... <clears throat> Yeah, I just want to be. Able, I don't want to miss anybody's question. That's kind of what I'm going back. Uh, Bobby Cole was asking about the PGT trading cards. What's that all about? Um, so the oh, PGT yeah. trading cards, they're little cards that uh, my wife draws up the, the artwork for them. But they're basically mushrooms that I've I've worked on personally, and I like how unique they are. How you know, all the designs. I try and strive for uniqueness in terms of each one. So each one that I would provide out, they would be available. Uh, each one comes with a, an isolated syringe if you're interested in researching them. And uh, yeah, the cards are something that is just kind of continue in the future. Each month we plan to release a new trading card. And over time goes, old trading cards will fall off the list. So this is kind of why they are trading cards, because they're not going to be around um, forever. I mean, I, I plan to continue with them, but a lot of these will just be collectibles because they're, they're just not going to exist anymore after the uh, production run has gone through them. So the ones that are have been around collecting them, you know, I... I thank you guys so much for, for the support for, for doing that. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's very fun. I, I, I wholeheartedly enjoy it and, and providing these out to the community. And a lot of people have fun with it, too. Oh, give the link. Jerdy's um, wants to know, where can I purchase them? They're available at pgtmycology.com. And the store opens up uh, once a month. And it'll open up for about two weeks or so. And typically in, in that time span, I end up selling out a lot of my stocks. So I, I would end up closing down at the end of the month. And I work on restocking for the next month. 
and you, you'll see it. There'll, there'll be a drop date, and you know that that's kind of everything that I do behind the scenes in order to make sure everything is good and ready to go each month. Um, that kind of ties into one of the next question that I've seen someone ask here is how how do me and you kind of go about coordinating our schedule to be able to um, do the work that we do, balance work life, balance personal life. Um, how, how would you, how, you feel free to answer this one, Nighty. How do you go about it? Because I know you work a full-time job in yeah, addition yeah. To, to doing your no. Michael content. Yeah, so I work, I'm on the eastern side here in Florida, and I work real early in the morning. Like I get up, you know, 3, 3.30 in the morning, and I work eight hours, so like 5 to one thirty. And so, and I have two days off a week unless I'm scheduled six days for overtime. And usually most people like this are free in the evening. Um, I don't think I'm going to be stuck on a second shift anytime soon. So right now I'm just a normal, you know, not nine to five, but normal 5 a.m. to 1.30 dude. And then that leaves a lot of time open in the evening to kind of coordinate like this. Because PGT, you're doing mushroom stuff like this is your career right now. So you've got a lot of time, but it's also hard. It probably takes discipline, too, to to get up and and work when it's just doing it at home. Because I'm forced to get up and go out, get in that truck, start it up, clock in, clock out. I'm, I'm lucky that I'm a local truck driver. So, you know, the truckers out in the road living in the truck, shout out to them because... I wouldn't have any 90 second rights without those guys bringing it to Dollar Tree. And yeah. then I'm just a local driver. So, so you spend just, your evenings and weekends being able to do mycology? Yeah, I still, it'll, I, it's still a hobby. So that's why I'm not pumping out a video every week like I was during um, the pandemic when I was furloughed from work for a little bit. But. Right now, just it's still a hobby. So whenever I do have time, whenever I have the, um, whenever something comes up, like if there's mushrooms growing and they're due for harvest, you got to do it. You can't just let them sit. So stuff like that. Yeah, for me, just... my schedule is a bit more flexible, um, but I try. Uh, I I have to dedicate a lot of time towards uh, family and personal responsibilities. Too. I have three dogs now that I take care of, so. I spend like a good three to four hours dealing with the dogs each day, taking them out for walks, tending to them, training them. Um, I spend about four or five hours on mycology each day as well, just tending on the lab stuff, um, working on grains, working on projects. I also dedicate time to um, answering questions for people. Um, I have a lot of questions that come through, so I, I dedicate about a good half hour to an hour each day to kind of answer some questions that come through. And in addition to that, I have other appointments that I kind of uphold with family too. Like I, I visit my uh, family in Philadelphia um, every few weeks just to attend on them, make sure they're okay. Um, my, my brother had passed away recently, so that that's kind of <clears throat> put a little bit of a downer into my life but you know i'm processing everything moving forward with it and you know I'm just trying to live life to the fullest that i can while not driving myself insane um doing my college 24 7 so i take breaks here and there uh, i set a hard limit on myself typically after like 7 p.m i try and stop working that's a little bit easier said than done <laughs> uh but you know, I try and find time where I can to, to take a break and not let it like fully engulf my life because there, there's other things that, that do take priority as well. As much as I want to put my ecology first, it's honestly family first. Um, and then, you know, my ecology and work and all that. It's like I said, it's got to take discipline when you're, even if you had a regular full-time job, but you work from home, that's got to take discipline to at least roll out of bed and get on the computer to, to work from home. Um, oh, listen to this. So P Funk asked, how many grams does it take for most people to get a good journey? I think I'm a bit broken with a high tolerance and don't get a journey unless I take around 8 to 12 to get started. Kind of sucks. 8 to 12 grams? I think you need to take a break, P Funk. Or people who are on um, SSRIs and serotonin medication, 
that can also affect it because psilocybin really plays with the serotonin receptors. So if you're on antidepressants and anti-anxiety stuff too, that also affects it. But other than that, everybody's so different. Yeah, some people. And just it depends have on the species, is the variety. Too. Big bad wolf. How long does a liquid culture syringe last? Picked up a few trading cards a month or so ago, but been too busy to inoculate. Um, if you threw them in the fridge, they should be good for a long time. Otherwise, at room temp, I don't know. I've I've kept stuff at room temp, and it's still grown fine. So as long as you're not. Yeah, they can last at them... room temp, but you'll prolong their lifespan if you put them in the refrigerator. It slows down their growth, and that'll prolong their lifespan. Uh, Kyle said, at PGT, what about fan video walkthroughs? I could use some hand-holding while trying to make food for the family. I don't I don't really know what what Kyle means by that. Yeah, um, I'm not sh exactly sure either. But if you're trying to grow food from your family, I got over two videos on how to grow um, lion's mane. I mean, I take that, that same process that I apply in the lion's mane video that I made, and that can be applied out to oyster mushrooms, it can be applied out to chestnut mushrooms. Um, yeah, it's, 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 that's how I, I would go about it if you're trying to provide you know, more food on the table. Kinsey Conrad, any advice for penis envy thinking? about trying that next they take a while to grow if you're not used to them you're going to be like what am i doing wrong and they're not fruiting it can take you know a month in fruiting for penis envy sometimes and they're pretty potent if you're not used to that yeah another thing with penis envy i've in my experience just to give you guys a little bit of a tip um when it comes to fruiting them and they are pinning do not miss them they will abort if you miss them. Just my personal experience um, with, with you know messing around with them. And also, in terms of the blobbing that happens with them, it's kind of hit or miss with the blobbing. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I haven't quite pinpointed an exact correlation to what causes the blobbing. One of the things that I've kind of noticed in my experimentations is colder temperatures do tend to cause them to blob as compared to warmer. And when I say colder, like more around like 65. Um, and then warmer, once I changed out the conditions, I noticed less blobbing, and that's more towards 70 to 75 degrees. So I think they like warmer temperatures. But it doesn't mean that you don't get blobs in warmer temperatures. They, they can still happen. Um, it's just a, a random hit or miss thing. And, and I've tried both pseudo casing and casing it after full colonization. I don't find much of a difference in terms of them stopping the blobbing. Uh, I just find it kind of prolongs the fruiting process because now they kind of have to colonize through that casing layer on top of what they had already. Just my experience I with think them. a lot of people, people forget that like psilocybe mushrooms, or should I say psilocybe mushrooms, are like a tropical climate species. Like that's where they really came from. So they do well in warmer climates to fruit. Yeah, totally. Uh, Mycelium so seb. Right, I'll, I'll say this real quick. Mycelium Seb asks, do you always have a grow going? If I don't have a full-on grow, it's at least grain spawn colonizing for the next video all the time, yeah. Yeah, I, I always have stuff colonizing. I always have a lot of different projects going at the time. It's just, well, why not? Um, a streak of scroll asks, how can I get some Starry Night Apes? Uh, I've, had, I've had a lot of people question me about these. Um, I do plan on releasing a trading card for them. Um, it's just more planned to be like midsummer because right now I have some other cards in the lineup already, so they kind of go through an order. And yeah, if anyone's asking about Starry Night, they'll be available this summer. Your camera cut off. Everyone's saying rip. <laughs> Your camera just ripped. 
Uh, I see Randy here says, how dangerous is penicillin contamination fruits? Are they okay as long as they're not in direct contact? Uh, yeah, most, most fruits are okay as long as they're not in direct contact with contamination, but definitely try and get, you know, what you can and get rid of the contamination as quickly as possible. You don't want to be keeping that around. It's not good for anybody. <laughs> Maybe good for the garden. You know, put that in your compost pile or put it in your garden bed. 90, you've gone. You, you've, 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 this... Oh. The source. There we I go. Don't know. I brought you back on. We're ah, back, see? I knew it. See? Yeah, we got, we got DDoS. <laughs> <laughs> We're being hacked already, the haters. So anyway, um... Got a few more minutes here. I just want to thank everybody for hanging out tonight. Like I'm glad a lot of a lot of people showed up. There was like what almost 200 people here tonight uh, playing along with us, just having fun, hanging out to see the first pilot episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised we had that many viewers. I, I was really like, hoping just to have you know a good number, maybe like 50 or so. I was expecting. I don't know. Maybe. maybe... Maybe this will continue to grow. More people will tune in. And yeah, there was an yeah, issue. Smash that like. Inoculate that like button. Subscribe. Hit the bell. All that YouTuber stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, the t-shirt plug again. Michael Valley Collaboration with PGT. Uh, my Patreon's launching really soon. Um... Let your friends know to check out Dollar Tree for that new Savvy Fair rice. It's the best at $1.25 right now. Uh, your wife's art account, people can go follow. What is it, Art of Mushy on Instagram? Yeah, people are interested um, in my wife's artwork. She does have an Instagram page. She posts comics um, based off of my ecology. So if you're interested, it's Art of Mushy, A-R-T-O-F-M-U-S-H-Y. So Instagram.com slash Art of Mushy. That's her Instagram page. So she'll be posting art on there. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else? Um... Jeremy Jetson asks, I want to start an outside garden. What soil would you recommend? Maybe one without trike? Depends on what kind of garden you're doing. If you're doing like a mushroom bed, uh, you would want to use wood chips for that, um, not necessarily soil. If you want to, if you're growing vegetables or something, then um, you know a soil mixture with compost, peat moss, and all that would be beneficial for gardening. And, and you can mix in spent substrate too into your garden beds. It'll break down pretty much like compost and just become fertilizer for your garden bed. Oh, let's see. Um, Orion said it was a good learning experience. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Learn some new stuff. <laughs> Slinkadoo said I had an incredible time. Yeah, there's more to come, everybody. So we're gonna we're gonna just stay updated with all the Michael Game Show social media, Instagram, YouTube, and we're eventually going to announce how you can become a contestant. And we might even do maybe a couple more pilot shows as well as we work the kinks out because, you know, tonight was the first show and I think it went pretty well besides a couple things. Other than that, I you know, that's it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it, it was great. People were having fun. Yeah. People were tuning in. People were learning some stuff, too. So that, that's that's the goal of this show. And I'm glad people were having fun with it. But yeah, I think time is, is starting to run short here. Um, so we're, we're going to wrap up the Q&As here, and we're going to finish off the stream. So I do appreciate you guys tuning in. So we're definitely going to be announcing when the next show would be. And you know, hope you guys tune in then as well. Any any final words, ninety? The final words are common sense will almost always prevail. So if you think something doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. You know, if it's if it's dry and you know it's supposed to be wet, 
than than wet it. You know, that's common sense. Um, but other than that, I keep saying just other than that because other than that, that's it. I had a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the next show. I can't wait to be co-host and get some of these contestants in here. And uh, we're going to learn who invented the next mushroom after the first mushroom was invented by, uh, what was his name? Anton DeBerry. Heinrich Paul Anton DeBerry. Pan Stamets. Solosai Polito? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. All right, guys. We'll uh, see you on the next show and just stay updated with the Michael Game Show social media. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.